G'day guys, Jeff here, and we have part two of Jets. I'm going to focus a little bit more on Melman turns and gun skills, because you only start off with the guns, a lot of people have difficulty. So two things you need to remember is that at least getting into a jet once per game gives you some jet points, even if you're not killing anything and or destroying vehicles. And number two is that uh, with gun kills against air, um, other aircraft, you will get a few points if you uh, remain persistent at it. And while you're doing that, it will definitely improve your skills. So it's the start of the match here, uh, you know, a nice little afterburner takeoff. And uh, what what I find, uh, once you do have heat-seeking missiles, is that you probably want to switch to that straight away and try to spot them in the air. The spotting certainly assists with uh, finding them after doing brake turns. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little later. Um, I think there is a brake turn point up here. With cannons, the important thing is once you're tracking a target, you do have to lead the target, you have to fire ahead of them, and that means that uh, you have to fire in a little bit ahead of them of where they're going to be. There's a little circle with a couple of lines on it on your HUD, and it's your heads-up display, and that tells you where your aircraft is going to be if you, you know, you're going to maintain that track. You see I would hit, eventually hit the road if I uh, kept that track, and uh, with that you can use it in conjunction with leading the target. Um, you can't rely on it so much in this game, obviously it's not real life, but it certainly uh, does help uh, telling you where you're going to be in relation to the aircraft. When you're doing full brake turns and whatnot, uh, you can't rely on it, so don't <laughs> don't worry if it's telling you you're going to hit the ground. With heat seekers, uh, you've got to make sure you do spread them out because the person could drop in for red flares. If you fire them too quickly, both missiles will be useless. It's better to have at least one hit. The aircraft might not be fully damaged, but uh, you can then follow up for a gun kill, which I do later. With brake turns, what I'm doing here is a full left trigger brake on the default layout, and uh, you know, for brake turns, spelt one way, think of it as brake turn, as in that's exactly what you're doing. You're just you're hitting the anchors or hitting the brakes, and doing a, you're turning to the left and pulling downwards on your stick so that you're really pulling through the turn. Um, some people just turn sideways and let the aircraft go through, but that's not how you do it. I pick up a nice little gun kill there for a vehicle disabled. As I mentioned, air to air um, combat, you're not going to get the points, uh, you're not going to get the KD, but uh, you could certainly get there by putting time in it because the guided missiles in conjunction with the SOFLAM from Recon is, as I mentioned in part one, is, is going to be very devastating uh, to tanks and, uh, and infantry on the ground who are near them. So I would definitely invest time in the Jets, it will change the way the game's played when you uh, actually squat up with some good teammates. So remember remember to use Hubbard Gaming to get good, good teams going. Um, one thing that I will show in this video is that uh, you can set yourself up for Melman turns and you can also uh, get a few points by shooting at gun, ground targets. As you'll see in this, it is difficult to get uh, vehicle disabled points on ground targets with the cannon. Uh, nearly the entire belt or the entire clip before you, uh, you know, before it reloads or overheats, um, definitely has to hit the target for you to get the vehicle disabled. Um, so you'll see, I, for a lot of these turns that I do, and then shooting at targets, I do get hit markers. I put entire clips into them. The crosshairs are on the targets. You do have to lead the ground targets a little bit, nowhere near as much as the air targets, but uh, so be it. You know, just. I think they're going to ramp up the destructive power of the cannon on ground targets at some point in the future because at the moment I believe it's too weak. It's perfect for the air to air, air but it's not good for the uh, air to ground. Um, blowing up buildings however is quite fun and that works if you hit the same structures that you would hit with um, your rockets or uh, tank rounds or tank shells. So this is a separate clip but uh, I think might be the same map, different side, uh, I'm unsure, but uh, it's going to do the Melman turn, so I'm going to attack ground targets, and then as air targets come up, I change my focus to them, and uh, rinse and repeat. A lot of people have been asking, uh, you know, about my pilot credentials, so in Australia I'm a commercial command instrument rated, so I have my instrument rating commercial in Australia, and uh, in the US I'm just private certified. Um, there is a conversion process that allows you to use your Australian credentials as a private pilot based on your foreign privileges over here. I did have that for a while, but uh, then I actually uh, did the full FAA test, the you know, knowledge test, flight test, and whatnot, what not, just to get a full pilot's license. Cause in order to do that, that's how you, you convert over to the instrument rating when you do the instrument work. Um, that 
Just there was a, an example of spreading out heat seekers. One of them hit after the flares, and then I followed up by burst firing the uh, cannon on ahead of the aircraft of where I expected to be. By uh, using them in combination like that, you can generally you can completely disable the aircraft, and they're out of action. Then I can turn my attention to the ground targets. I mean, I am actually calling out to um, people on my team to spot ground targets. Uh, Alex24 uh, is actually on my squad and I'm communicating with him, but he, um, I'm asking if he could spot out uh, helis, spot out aircraft, spot out tanks where he can and whatnot. So here, even though I'm going off target, you can see that I sort of put myself back into the line that I was previously, and I'm going to commence that email and turn, which is the uh, pulling full back on the stick to go over the top. And as I uh, go over the top, I then can do a full roll, and I roll out on my heading, and now I'm using left stick rudder to line myself out with the target, and I can start putting the uh, rounds into the, the target. Um, I was going far too fast there, so there's a, there's a trade-off. Either you have two or three passes to kill a tank, um, or a, a varmint vehicle of some sort, or a troop carrier, and uh, you, you'll get the kill by moving over them fast, but you do have to do a number of passes. Or you hold the left trigger completely for you know, braking, you completely, completely slow the aircraft down to a very slow speed, about 180 knots, and you can actually get about three sets of uh, reloads of your cannon into the ground target. And that can definitely take them out on the one run. The problem with that is that um, a lot of people are now getting Stinger missiles as part of the Engineers class. Um, a lot of people prefer RPGs over Stingers, but you'll find that later in this video, um, you know, when an aircraft's just flying around enough, uh, people start pulling out their stingers and taking shots at you. And only with one set of infrared flares per um, about 8 or 10 seconds of reload time, you got two people aiming at you, there's no way you can escape the stingers. Um, I made a comment about how the stingers, I have seen the stingers hit mountains and whatnot. When you first launch them, they actually will skip, uh, they'll, they'll fly around buildings and fly around mountains to hit the target but once they're on their way towards you you can do quick turns and whatnot behind mountains for them to hit the mountains i've seen it with my own eyes and uh, as you're flying the aircraft you'll you'll get people shooting at you and you'll see the same thing as well um, someone will shoot at you you'll duck behind a mountain very quickly and uh, the stinger will not compensate however at the start it does compensate for all obstacles uh, so you know when it shoots at you if you're in open air, there's no way you're getting away from it. You've got one set of flares. If two people are aiming at you, bad luck. It just happens. So as we're going on here, um, I'm going to stop talking about this particular gameplay, but you will see uh, some moment turns and uh, they're moving between aircraft and ground targets. I don't get many or any points on the ground targets, which goes to show you how hard it actually is to um, take them out with guns. Uh, but I do get a number of gun kills on the aircraft in the air. Um, and I guess to, to finish it up, you know, when I do get hit finally by uh, two guys shooting at me on the ground. Oh, actually here I stalled, so we're flying out of the game box here, so we both stalled. I was very close to a gun kill, as you can see, but I stalled out, he ejected. I can see him ejecting right now, but um, yeah, I, I flew out of the game box, you just have to wait till your aircraft recovers. You can't be locked on from the ground, you can be locked on by uh, aircraft in the air aiming up at you, so you just need to be mindful of that, that you're a sitting duck. So don't go too high. Um, yeah, so with the uh, with the end of this match, I do finally get hit, um, and then you know, make, sh make yourself useful, put yourself over the battlefield, eject, open your parachute last minute, and actually do some work, and you'll see that I get into a, a flag here. Um, apart from that, I'm going to give you a little flight story. So there's a there's a huge uh, ast ast astronomy dish in Australia in parks, and uh, it's also had a movie done after it called The Dish. For Australians and New Zealanders, you're probably well aware, well aware of that movie, and it's hilarious. Um, for everyone else, I recommend that you look on Netflix or just try to get it somehow and watch The Dish. And uh, It has Sam O'Neill in it and a few other Americans, but it's a, an Australian comedy. It's pretty, pretty funny, and it's based on the the moon landing and how Australia was a big part of the um, process for NASA because of the time that uh, you guys actually did the lunar module landed on the moon. Um, Australia had line of sight to the moon and the US was dark so we had to help out Houston to re you know, relay voice transmissions and whatnot. 
and video transmissions. And the movie's based around, uh, you know, it's, it's a comedy and it's based around some of the issues that we had and, uh, you know, some inter interesting characters. But my story is that, uh, as a pilot, I had a really, really good mate of mine, Wade, from uh, Brisbane. We used to hang out, uh, you know, every month together. Uh, he would come down or I'd go up there and one particular uh, weekend... We he came down on a Thursday or Friday and uh, we made up our mind that we would go flying somewhere. So I said, how about we go out to the dish? So from Sydney to Parks, it's not actually a long flight. It's uh, only about, well, in the aircraft at the time that I had, uh, that I owned was a Cessna 172. Um, and I believe at the time, distance wise, it was about uh, 60 minutes or 65, 70 minutes to get out there uh, with the way that we would fly. And um, as we're, you know, so what we thought to ourselves is that the, the airfield is about five and a half or six kilometres from town and then the dish is further again. So that's about you know, two to three miles and the dish being an additional seven or eight miles. So it's, it is walking distance, but in terms, you know, to be mindful of time, you don't want to be <coughs> going, you know, you don't want to be flying and then um, walking for a couple of hours to get out to the dish. Um, there are tours and whatnot. So what we did is we, I had two little gas powered scooters being petrol powered scooters so we uh, put them in the back of the aircraft and folded them up and dismantled them a little bit chucked them in the back of the aircraft we left landed at parks got them out and prepped them for um, basically riding scooters along the highway into town to pick up some more fuel and then ride them out to parks now this is where the story takes a huge tangent um, I'm, I know Aussies uh, know what they are but we have a lot of cow grates in the country. They're great metal grates that you put um, across the road so that uh, cattle can't uh, step across certain boundaries or you know cross car fences uh, to get into farmland. And uh, the airport has one of these, you know, to stop the cattle from getting onto the airport. So I'm riding the scooter and I'm, I'm going flat chat or full ball or you know max throttle. And uh, as I'm riding ahead, Wade's behind me and he, you know, his scooter's catching up. I see the cow. I see a small cow grate. It only had about eight or nine of the bars on there, so like I wasn't really paying attention. But uh, I thought to myself, "Oh shit! I've got to either like completely break, and I wouldn't have been able to break in time, or I have to just go over it." So I went over it, and as I'm going over it, the you know the, the, the gas scooter is jumping up and down, and I'm I'm hitting all the grates. And on the very, I think I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to make this. This is awesome. Um, you know, I'm totally out of control. But on the very last grate, the back wheel rips off the chain, rips off the mount of the gas-powered scooter, and because of the rotation mass that it had, it bounced, hit a tree stump, bounced over the top of my head. I come to a screeching halt. So I only have my front wheel on, and the, the uh, and I'm sta still standing on the scooter. I didn't crash, thankfully, but I'm standing on the scooter. There's dust everywhere from the dust in the country. A wheel's bouncing over my head, and then it just starts rolling down the freeway. And uh, you know, Wade starts pissing himself laughing, but obviously I now have a disabled vehicle, and uh, we have to repair it. So, um, for the fact that I was in an assault class at the time, um, you know, we had to return back to the airport and try to find an engineer uh, to give us some help. But we did. We found this air aircraft mechanic guy who lent us some tools. It takes us about an hour and a half to get the wheel back on, get the chain tension and fix the chain. Um, yeah, we had to make some spot welds to get the chain working again. And uh, we got the whole thing working again and it worked fine, you know, it revved up. The, the wheel was a little wobbly. Um, it did suffer some damage, but it was still usable. So, you know, off we leave. I'm careful this time to go past the grates, but as I, uh, you know, we go past the grates, I walk the scooter over it, put it on the freeway, and now we're going flat chat at <laughs> the top speed of the scooter, which really was only like 22 miles an hour uh, at best, uh, or uh, yeah, maybe 40 k's, 45 k's, uh, if my conversion's right. So I'm wearing this little bike helmet, because uh, that's law in Australia, otherwise the police fine you, and, and the fines in Australia are pretty stiff, uh, pretty high, that is. And, uh, you know, but here's two of us, we're gunning down the freeway, trying to get into parks, because we want to see the dish. Um, we can see it in the distance. It looks great. It's a big white dome. You know, you can see it in the distance, and we're like, "Yep, that's where we need to go." It actually took. It ended up ends up taking us like 12 minutes, but it felt like an hour. But it took like 12 minutes to get into town, just because we, you know, on these slow ass scooters on the freeway, and uh, your hands start getting numb from the vibrations of the tarmac on the freeway because it's like a rock tarmac. You know, rather than smooth asphalt, it's like rock tarmac. 
so your hands have vibration numbness and uh, you know we're not feeling so good about it as we get there we're, we're feeling pumped that we'll be able to get to the dish and uh, we turn onto the road to get go towards the, the dome and then Wade's clutch starts playing up where you know he, he's revving the engine but the wheel's just not spinning it's a friction clutch and for whatever reason we, we turn around to back to t for whatever reason that's happening we were like turn around back to town and uh, we have to just put up with the fact that we might have to do repairs again we tried doubling like I tried to put him on my scooter and go but they just it just didn't run at all um, so now we're starting to it's starting to turn into a comedy of errors um, we go to the bus stop we just missed the bus we don't want to wait another hour and so we start making repairs as best we can we buy a few tools at a hardware store they wouldn't lend it to us the bastards but we get a few tools, we try to fix it, we get it working just a little bit, but uh, you know the clutch is completely gone, we can only tighten it so much against the wheel. Um, so we give him a push start and uh, we start making our way back to the airfield because we completely ran out of time. So uh, you know we're, we're down and dejected and we're, you know, we're thinking to ourselves, oh well, we'll come back another time, but we've now just blown three to four hours of our day um, on the scooters trying to get out there. It sounded like a really good idea at the start, but it was just useless. And uh, as we're going back along the freeway, you know, I'm the pilot here, um, but we're going back the freeway, and a damn wasp flies straight into the top of my helmet, um, on top of my head, and it just starts going like like a cut, mad cut snake, um, and just stabbing me on the head. So I'm, I'm going, ah, 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 and Wade's just looking at me as we're riding on, you know, on the scooters, there's loud wind around us, uh, flat chat, and he's going on to us... Yeah, he's looking at me like I'm some sort of idiot, but I, I stop the scooter, throw it down, rip off my helmet and start patting my head to try to get rid of this wasp, and it just hurts so much, but, uh, you know, as people who have been stung by wasp knows, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's just ridiculously painful because they can keep stinging you, and uh, my head starts swelling up, but, yeah, I put up with that, we uh, get back to the airport, and yeah, there's nothing... It's uneventful to get home. Um, never did make it out to the dish. It's a shame, really. I got some really good photos from a distance, but uh, I ended up coming home and then making my wife uh, sit down to watch the dish because it's on television in the States here every once in a while. Uh, that, along with The Castle, which I think is another Aussie humour classic movie that people might want to check out. But anyway, that's uh, that's my pilot story. <clears throat> I'm... Uh, I'm really looking forward to actually flying around the states uh, some more uh, so I did convert over as I said to my US private certificate um, and uh, yeah it's just it, the states is such a great place to fly very aviation friendly lots of airports compared to other countries fairly inexpensive in the scheme of things and uh, for those of you who have ever thought about flying I suggest you just go to your local air, airfield and say look take me up for a trial introductory flight or TIFF um, and uh, you know, for a small change, you can get to fly an aircraft, see if you like it. So we definitely need more recreational pilots. And just think about it, in 10 years from now, flying cars are going to be affordable. Affordable as in, you know, seventy, eighty thousand $80,000 for a two-seater light sport aircraft car airplane you know, conversion deal. I'm definitely going to get one of those. And um, I really think that it's worthwhile. It's, you know, for those of you who have the means and the time to learn to fly uh, recreationally, definitely get into it. It, uh, you won't be disappointed. Anyway guys, I'm going to shut up the commentary for now. Um, we have a few more minutes remaining on this video, but I have things to do today. So until next time, see ya.